Polls show some 60 percent of Americans support President Obama's decision to restore diplomatic relations with Cuba and move toward ending the embargo in place since the 1960s. Among the strongest supporters for ending it are American farmers who see Cuba as a new market for their exports. VOA's Midwest correspondent Kane Farabaugh has been looking at the story as it affects farmers in Illinois and joins me right now. Thank you so much for joining me, Kane. Thank you, Emra. Kane, you spent a lot of time with this particular farmer. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, Thomas Martin is a farmer near Wagoner, Illinois. He's been farming on land that has been in his family for three or four generations. He's, uh, he's someone who is very connected to his land, and he is someone who's an advocate of exploring new markets for U.S. agricultural products. And a new market for U.S. agricultural products, at least a new expanded market, would be Cuba. And so uh, ending the embargo and having more trade with Cuba is something that he completely supports. You also mentioned in your report that in the past, U.S. US farmers could sell to Cuba, but the transaction was strictly cash, which put them at a disadvantage. How so? Well, what has happened is that the United States, is, because of the embargo, is not able to extend credit to Cuba. So everything that is exported there, particularly the corn and the soy that's coming from the Midwest United States here, it has to be paid for in cash up front. You know, there are certain technicalities that, that, that help that effort. But what that has made is the U.S., it's made the U.S. less competitive with countries like Brazil, which are exporting to Cuba and are uh, establishing credit with Cuba. Uh, so that has actually resulted in a decline of several hundred million dollars worth of uh, exports to Cuba in the last five or six years. And there's a group of uh, representatives that will be visiting Cuba. Thomas Martin is one of them. Is he excited about this? He's very excited. He's been to Cuba before, and uh, he's excited to go again because he's going to uh, take a, a, a learning uh, journey uh, tour with the group. He's going with the U.S. Agricultural Coalition for Cuba, which is a coalition of groups that represent uh, producers, agricultural firms here in the Midwest. And they're going on a, a, on a tour really to explore what could happen in Cuba if there wasn't an embargo and where they could place their products. All right. There's also the question of human rights in Cuba and how the U.S. and Cuba will reconcile this issue. Thomas Martin had a comment in your report about that. Let's roll that clip and come back. As both a farmer and a Catholic, you know, I, I definitely saw that there's a lot of churches closed there. And uh, that's something that definitely concerns me in Cuba is their human rights record. That said, 54 years of our embargo has done very, very little um, as far as improving the human rights conditions in Cuba. Uh, listen to the sound, but it seems like as if opening up or, or, or removing these sanctions would kind of work in the favor of the Cuban regime. Well, I think that President Obama in his State of the Union address addressed this concern directly, and he said that it's time for something new. It's time for a new approach. I think Thomas Martin, uh, in, the, in his comment there, had indicated that, uh, you know, uh, isolating the uh, Cuban regime from the United States has been the, the tactic in place for the last 54 years. Uh, there hasn't been a dramatic change uh, in the human rights record of Cuba. And so uh, I think that Thomas Martin and others who are advocating for an end to the embargo hope that by opening Cuba up to the United States may help influence or change that human rights record. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. Via Midwest correspondent Kane Farabad, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, everyone.